Hello, in this video I'm going to show you how to set up and use the HM Williams online bookkeeping solution. Firstly, to log into your account, all you need to do is open up a web browser. So I'm using Chrome at the moment, but we do work on Firefox and Internet Explorer. And then all you need to do is go to the hmwilliams.co.uk website. And then in the top right hand side, you will see a blue button here which says Logins. All we need to do is click on the drop down box and go to Bookkeeping. Once we click on bookkeeping, all you need to do is enter the username and password which you would have received on an email directly from HM Williams and just click login. And that will take you through to the memorable word screen and again just put in the digits in there um, relevant to the memorable word that you would have been given. Just click login and that will take you through straight to the bookkeeping software. So once you've logged into the software, we will see the front page, and this is our front page dashboard. Obviously, there's um, there's no information in it because we haven't got started. So firstly, what we need to do, um, we've got a little getting started guide at the top just to help you on your way. So firstly, we want to create a new customer. So I can either click on this link here, or alternatively, on the left-hand side, we can click into the customer module, and then just click on this box to create a customer. So I'm just going to create a new customer in here. And then you can free type over the customer code. It, it does generate one automatically, but you can type whatever you want in there. Um, and then just click the Create button. And then all we do to repeat that process is on the left-hand side, just go and click Create again. And then we'll just create our next customer. And again, just free type over the code and Create. And that's how easy it is to create new customers. And on the left hand side now, when we go into that module, we would see a full list of customers listed within here. And if we go back to our front dashboard, we'll be able to see that the create a customer option has now been ticked. And we've done that within the system. So if we go back into the customers on the left hand side and just click into customer one, there's various things we can do from here. So firstly, in contact details, um, all I've put is the, um, the name in here, but you can actually put a contact. Um, so we can just put a name in here. Um, we can put their address details in here as well. Add in their postcode. And then we can put in phone numbers, mobiles, fax, email addresses in there as well, um, websites. If we put in an email address, we will see it just opens up a little hyperlink. So I can click on that and it will open up my email editor so I can send them an email um, straight from here. We can also put in their website. And again, it just creates a little link there so I can get access straight to their website and we can get access to their address as well using Google Maps. So once you've um, set, set up all that information, what we do, just click Update and that will save that within the system. If we go to the Options page, uh, we've now got the option to put in a default purchase order number if it's something you do with your clients. We can adjust the payment term, so by default it's 28 days, but you can just change that, so it might be 30 days. Or alternatively, you might have shorter payment terms, so we can just adjust that down to 7. We can also put in the VAT number in here, um, and we can choose whether we want that added um, on a line to new invoices that we create. Um, and then we can put in any discounts that we want to set up for clients in here as well. And then once we click update, that customer record has now been updated. So if we go back to our dashboard, the next step it's asking us to do is um, send our first invoice. So we have an invoicing module uh, within the software. On the left hand side, all you need to do is click on invoices and then we'll have the option here to create an invoice. We can either do it from here or if we're in the customer screen and go to our customer we can create a quote or create an invoice directly from this screen. Okay, So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to go into invoices on the left hand side and we're going to create our first invoice. So all we do is click create and then it's automatically defaulted to my first customer but I would just choose the relevant customer or I could just type the name in here and it will search them. 
If it was a new customer, then I can just click on this plus sign here and just put a name, an email address and a phone number and click create and that will create a new customer record and I'll be able to generate an, an invoice for them from here. As you can see, it's brought through their address details, uh, but I could type over that if I need to and you have the option to use a different delivery address and you can add that in here as well. We can put in our purchase order number and we can see our issue date and due date has come through for seven days because that's what we set it for this customer but we can override that if we need to from here just by keying in the date and we can see our default currency is British pounds. All we need to do then is just add line items to this so our default is sale of goods um, quantity and then all we need to do is put the description of the work carried out so this is completely free free type in here um, and then you just put the amount and you'll see that it calculates the VAT and it puts in the total as well. If you have an overall total um, and you don't want to put the rate in and then the VAT then you do have the ability to just go to the total on the right hand side type in the full amount and it will work backwards and calculate the VAT from the gross. Okay, And then if there's more work that you did you can just add line items in there um, and then you can just free type um, whatever it may have been in here as well um, and then just add another value and you just add all the work that you did um, to this invoice and then you've got the option just to save it in the top right hand side of the screen. So once you've done that, that invoice is now saved in the system. Now if we go to invoices on the left hand side we will see that invoice sitting there and we can see the amount, we can see the status of the invoice as well in here, the status is unpaid. If we go to the customer screen we'll be able to see that customer one now has an outstanding balance of £720 and if we drill into that customer record and go to this little tab at the top which says invoices and stats we'll be able to see that invoice is sitting in there as unpaid and we can see the total first invoice last invoice dates within here as well and any amounts that would be overdue by your customers. If I click into that invoice, I can click into it from the customer screen if I want to. It will just take me down to the invoices module on the left hand side. If there's anything you ever need to amend on here, you can just click the edit button and you can go and make any changes to that. We could say, well, um, we just want to put two in there and times it because it may have been two days and then save it and that will adjust it um, and change that value within the invoice. We also have the option at the top of the screen just to copy. So if you're doing uh, repeat work or similar work for different clients, rather than having to type out that invoice again, we can now just go to copy and then we can choose what we want to copy that to. So I'm going to copy that to a new invoice and then you can choose the customer who that's for. So I can say that this is actually for customer two and we can see that it's automatically gone up to invoice number two. And then I can save that. Okay, so if I now go back to my invoices module, we can see we now have two invoices in the system for exactly the same value and the status of those is unpaid. So that's how we can manage invoices within the system and now if we go back to the dashboard, we'll be able to see that we now have £2,640 owed to us, which is the total of the two invoices that we've created. And then at the top here, we can see that the invoice has been set up. Now once those invoices have been created, um, you've got a couple of options. So we can either print that off, and we can print that off as a PDF document. So I can just print that off and attach it maybe to my Outlook email. Or alternatively, we do have an email editor built within the software. So if you just click this little email option at the top, or this email option here, click email, it will bring up the email editor, um, it's saying who it's going to because we put that email within the customer record but I can type over that if it's to somebody else. Um, the subject line and we can see that invoice as attached as a PDF and I can email that straight from the system. Okay, so that's how we manage invoices. So if we now go to our dashboard, it's now asking us to set up our first supplier so all we do is we scroll down so we have our customers quotes and invoices and the next section is suppliers and purchases so I can click into suppliers and then I can create 
a new supplier and all we do is repeat the process that we did for our customers so I'm just going to put supplier 1 in here and again we can put a code in create that supplier and then just we just repeat that process um, and I can go and create a new supplier within here create so now when we go to suppliers on the left hand side just like our customer module we'll see all our suppliers listed and we can see total that we've paid to them and any outstanding balance if we click into a supplier record we can see that the information we can put in is very similar so we can still put in all their contact details um, their name phone number mobile etc if we go to other information uh, we can put our payment terms and conditions of working with them also their VAT details um, and then we can put our default purchase code what we exactly do with this supplier um, and we can also add in their bank account details so if we pay our, our suppliers via banks it's just somewhere where you can store those account information securely and then I'm just going to update that so then once we've done that we can either create a new purchase invoice directly from the supplier record exactly the same as we can do from the customer screen or I can go to the purchase module on the left hand side and then we have the option to create a new purchase invoice so to create a new purchase invoice all we do we do exactly the same as we did with the sales invoice so it will automatically bring through the first supplier um, but again you just choose who it's for and then you can put in a reference if you want to it will bring through the issue date and the due date and we just click the add line item option in here so all we do is choose the code that it may be so I'm just going to say that's materials purchased just add in there materials and the amount and again it will calculate the VAT in there for you and just click save and then you'll have the option again to email that through to the supplier or you can print that off um, and send it via Outlook if you wish to okay um, if we go back into purchases we'll just create a new one in here so we'll just go and create one for uh, supplier 2 um, and again we can put in a reference in there um, and just add a line item and again all you do is you just find exactly um, the code that you need so let's say this was stationary I can just go to stationary and then we can just type exactly what we bought and how much they cost and then save and that purchase invoice is now sitting in the system so if we go to purchases we can see those two sitting in there and if you go to suppliers uh, we can see the outstanding balance in there listed again and then if I click into there we've, we've got purchases and stats the same as we have for invoices and we can see any outstanding purchase invoices that are in there so that's how easy it is to manage suppliers and purchases and now if we go to our dashboard we'll be able to see that we've now got £540 money we owe because that's what we owe to our suppliers so we can now see that we've got £2,100 um, available within the business.